So we're going to talk about the Internet of Things today. How many people here have heard of the Internet of Things? <laughs> this is Korea, okay? <laughs> Internet of Things means that everything we are buying will be online, from your fitness bands to the cars that you, you drive, the refrigerators, the TVs, and so forth. Everything is online. This is big business. How big is it? John Chambers called this a $19 trillion market. Now that's big. Is this for real, $19 trillion? Well, a few months later after he said that, Google bought Nest for $3.2 billion. Yes, it is this big. So th Nest is a thermostat company. So why is it worth so much? The value is in the data. Speaking of data, where are all our data? We are so used to having our data online. I mean, in Facebook, there's a lot of our social contacts, social information. There is LinkedIn and all the different, you know, the emails and, the, and our phones and so forth. Everything is online, and now we have the Internet of Things. And what is coming up is the medical, set, medical Internet of Things, okay? Your ECG monitors, your blood pressure, all right? Everything is going to go online. And obviously, it'd be really nice to have all the data in one place. Certainly, I want to see all my medical data together to see how healthy I am, or, or my doctors want to do the same thing, right? So you have the thermostat wanting to tell, I mean, the security camera wanting to tell the, the thermostat that nobody is home, please turn off the heat. So everything should be connected together. We have also done some research to show that if you have software that has read everything about yourself, then they can be much better. You can have a much better search engine. You can have a much bra a better browser if these software know everything about us. So the question is, who is going to host all this data? Who is going to put all this data together? Interestingly enough, Financial Times, a few months after the purchase, was asking the question, who will be the Google of the Internet of Things? Okay? Not whether we will have a Google of the Internet of Things, but who will it be? So who will it be? It's interesting that if you look at all the pictures here, there are a lot of things that are actually built here in Korea and China and so forth. But what is most likely is that all these things are going to go to one of these giants, Facebook, Google, Apple, Microsoft, so these are some examples of the, of the likely host of our, of our personal data, putting all the personal data together. How are we going to interact with these data? My guess is that there will be a virtual assistant. You may have heard of Siri, uh, Google Now, Facebook is making M, and my favorite is actually Microsoft Xiaobing. Xiaobing is a little bot that talks on the, on the WeChat. And the interesting thing about Xiaobing is it has a 16-year-old girl personality, okay? So she is your friend. And uh, we found that people would talk to her whenever their friends have gone to sleep. And as a friend, Xiaobing is going to learn a lot about you, about your friends, your family, about what you're going to do. And it is very, very likely that Xiaobing will be helping you buying your, your airplane ticket to Korea even before I started working on looking, you know, looking for flights. And what we believe is that in the future, the Xiaobing will be, our virtual assistants will be fully personalized and they will be replacing the search of the future. Okay, because they know all your, personal affair, uh, all your personal information, and they will interface to the eBay, to the Amazon, they will be your assistant to all the different places that you shop, so they can have a lot of information about us. So that's good, or is it? There are a lot of very interesting questions. So do we care about privacy? Will there be one single company that knows everything about a lot of us? That's kind of worrisome. And there's a question of interoperability. Will there be a monopoly or will there be an oligopoly that don't interact with each other? What about choice? And then the question is, what about all the other companies? Will there be open competition? And if we don't, then where is the innovation? And if we don't have good innovation, then the consumers will suffer. Is there a way out of this? And we think so. And the answer is open source. Okay, so Apple, you know, with the iOS that's closed source, 
There are now more, you know, Android is open source. There are more Android phones than iOS phones out there. And the answer is open source, and Stanford wants to lead this project. So the idea here is that we want to create an open source manager. We call this the Thing Engine. And this Thing Engine is open source. It can be hosted by anybody, okay? Just like email. Today, email is hosted by many different companies. And you can even set one up yourself like Hillary Clinton, right? You can have your home, own home server, and it is all interoperable, and it can be even running on your phone. And interfacing to, with the, to the humans will be the virtual assistant. And we call this technology Sabrina. Sabrina is named after the friendly teenage witch. He's, she was a TV character. And the idea is that Sabrina is going to help you with all your tasks magically. But the important thing is that this is all open source. Anybody can build on top of it and make it available. So really, are we going to take on the giants? <laughs> and I think we can do that. And the answer here is that there are many, many companies outside of these four companies wanting to have an open ecosystem. So we are creating a website. We've created a website called Thinkpedia. It's a little bit like Wikipedia. But instead of just knowledge, we're collecting all the interfaces to all the things out there, from the Facebook um, website to the, to, the, to the heating pad that you bought from the store. So we have made this available. And um, in one week, my class put up like 30 interfaces to all these different things. There are many, many things out there. There is a very long tail. So for example, one of these things we connected to is PhD comics, okay? Because this is the kind of thing that they want. And the idea is that if you open it up, then we can be much bigger and, and, and serving many, many more people than just having a few companies do the work. And we have also invented a language called ThinkTalk. It is a little language that allows you to connect all these things together. So for example, you can say that if the weather, you know, if it's going to rain tomorrow, send me a note so that I can bring an umbrella. Okay? So it is just a little one line of code that connects all these things. But if you look at that one line of code, it is very close to English. And from there, now I can build a natural language assistant. The more interfaces you put in, the smarter the assistant is, and it's going to talk about everything, from Facebook to the Arduino car that you may be building with your, your, with your kids. So let's put it together. So what we're saying here is that there is open source manager that can be run anywhere. It works off Thinkpedia, which is a crowdsourced interface using a language called ThinkTalk. This is what the hardware does. And then for the, end, for the users, we have Sabrina. And Sabrina is running on Omelette Chat. Omelette Chat is an open messenger. It was developed at the Moby Social Lab, and it has been commercialized by my research group. And we are one of the Start X companies. And this messenger is very different from all the other messengers out there. It doesn't, take any, it doesn't own any user's data. And in fact, it helps you put the data in the repository of your choice. So for example, I may put my data in Dropbox, and people in China may be putting it in the Baidu cloud. So in this way, it can go international, and you have all the interoperability. What is even more interesting is that now that you are putting them on a messenger system, then the virtual assistants can talk to each other. And that's where the fun begins. So the virtual assistants can share any information about us from things like locations, GPS locations, fitness data. It can be health data shared between me and my doctors, and so forth. Okay? The most important thing is that all these social interactions have no third party owning and seeing all the data. And what we expect to see in the future is that there will be as many social apps that have privacy um, guarantees as there are websites today in, in the internet. So what we have built is a full stack. Um, at the bottom is the database. There will be discovery protocols like all seen or OIC. I just found out that OIC is now renamed to OCF. Right? And these are discovery protocols, and we can provide interoperability across them by going up one level. So Omelet is a messaging system. Think system handles your data. Think talk talks to the, uh, to the database. And then Sabrina is the virtual assistant technology that is fully extensible, and everybody can help build it. And with that, we think that we can take on these guys because, because this is all um, done by everybody else together. 
So in summary here is like we are launching this open social movement and, and we want to work with everybody to create a complete open stack from messaging to the internet of things to the virtual assistant. We think that privacy is needed in order to handle more important tasks like education, health, and finance. And if we do this right, we will have a much better e ecosystem and, when, and then this can truly take off. So you may think that this is really quite hard to do and quite impossible. And uh, what I want to do is to leave you with this question. Do you remember AOL? <laughs>